Jessie V and today I have a creepy Christmas tree story for you today. I feel like if I'm gonna do creepy pastas and creepy stories I might as well try and make it Christmas themed or find ones that are like winter or just Christmas would be better which is why today it's a Christmas one. And I don't want to pick things that are gonna like ruin Quish Christmas. Did I almost say Christmas? <laughs> Oh man, it's been a long day already, guys. Anyways, like I was saying, I don't want to ruin Christmas for you guys. So it's never going to be anything like super intense to give you nightmares or not like Christmas anymore. Don't worry, I'm going to choose things that are obviously like fake. You know what I mean? They're obviously fake. But they still might creep you out. What is wrong with my voice today? Why can't I speak? They might creep you out. They might have creep you out. Anyways, wow. <laughs> What's wrong with me? Before I get started, because you guys know I always have these fun little intros. <laughs> I know I've been showing these off a lot, but I feel like not everyone watches every single one of my videos. People kind of like pick and choose. If you like creepy stuff, you'll click on creepy videos. If you like story times, you'll click on those. So I feel like today there's probably a lot more people who are watching this for the creepy stuff who haven't seen that I have new merch out. So I did create an 80s style sweatshirt, which I really love. I designed it myself. It has words down the sleeve. It says, embrace your weird side. I love it. This is my favorite design yet. And it's up on my merch site right now. The link is down below in the description. They're going really, really fast. I guess people are wanting them for Christmas. And they are limited edition. So if you want one, the link is down below. Get it right away. Get it fast before it goes. But yeah, this, I can't believe, this is my favorite design. I've worn this shirt probably 12 times in a row. It smells like me. Anyways, though, guys, this story kind of has two different parts to it. The first part is what is in the title of this video, and the second part is a really creepy Christmas tree story that I found online. So the reason why this title is called Never Keep Your Christmas Tree On Past Midnight is because it's something that always freaked me out since I was a kid. And I know I've made so many story times about different like urban legends and things people told me that freaked me out as a kid, and that's because there were so many. Like for some reason, and I don't know if it was just the school I went to as a kid, but rumors spread so fast and it was like every week there was a different thing people were freaked out about or a different urban legend people were talking about. It was just there was constant things being thrown around my classroom that just stuck with me. I feel like it didn't stick with anybody else but me. But this wasn't something I was told in class. In fact, remember those, were they called chain mail? They were like emails that kids used to get either on like MSN or just like to your actual email that said like, if you don't forward this to 10 people, Sally the dead girl's gonna come after you. You know those types of emails? Those used to freak me out so much. And I used to tell my friends at school, like if you get one of those, please don't forward it to me. It scares me. They're not real. I don't want to see them. They keep me up at night. Please don't forward me those chain emails. But my friends would be like, no, Jesse, like if I don't email it to you, like Sally's gonna come after me, like I have to forward it to 10 friends. And I was like, well, can I not be one of those 10 friends, please? Like, do you guys remember those? I feel like if you're younger watching this, I don't think those are a thing anymore. I think like if you're, you know, in your teenage years or even my age or older, you will remember those because they were so popular back when I was in elementary school. And I remember getting this one email around Christmas and it was from the friend that I told not to send me chain mail emails, but she was like so into that stuff. Like, I don't know about you guys. Did you ever forward them? Like, okay, blah, blah, blah. I want to know from you guys. Comment down below. When you got those chain emails, did you forward them to your friends and family or did you just leave them and be like, no, those are fake? Because I would never forward them. I literally would read it, be scared out of my wits and then not forward them because deep down I knew they were fake and I also didn't want to spread bad luck to other people. Like I was that kind of person, you know what I mean? I feel like my necklace is choking me. <laughs> Ugh, should I take it off? I need to take it off. It's choking me. Okay, excuse me. It's like a snake. Go away, please. Okay, that's so much better. I can breathe. Wow. <sighs> Taking that air, Jess. So anyways, I was told in this email that if you don't have your Christmas tree set to go off at midnight, or if you don't physically turn it off at midnight, these evil elves were gonna come down your chimney and steal all of your presents. And as a kid, you're like, um, no, I wanna keep all my presents. But at the very bottom, it was like, but if you forward this to 25 people, you don't have to worry about it and the elves won't come and you can keep your Christmas tree on as long as you want. But if you don't forward this to 25 people, you better turn your 
your Christmas tree off by midnight. And so first of all, I was reading it and I was like, okay, I don't, <laughs> I don't have 25 friends to send this to. But then as I said on the other side, I was like, okay, that's not gonna happen. But like deep down, I was like, but what if it does? And I will admit, I think for the first couple weeks after reading that, I actually would go down in the middle of the night and turn off the Christmas tree. My parents don't know this. Like if they're watching this now, they're gonna be like, oh, so that's why it was off in the morning. I mean, I feel like most people probably turn it off during the nighttime. I mean, I know that I do anyways. Like I have my Christmas tree on here and it's not because of the chain mail I turn it off. Like I just turn it off to conserve electricity. Preserve, conserve words. But I do have friends and I know a lot of people who just keep it on throughout the entire night. And it's like a setting where once the sun comes up, like all of the lights turn off, you know? But for a while as a kid, when midnight came, I was like, I have to be downstairs when my parents are sleeping. I have to turn off the tree. But kids, if you're watching chain mail or like the retweets, like retweet this or your life will be over. Like those aren't real. They're obviously not real, but I do believe they still freak people out. But comment down below what's the creepiest chain mail email you've ever gotten. Anyways though, the reason why I thought of that chain mail email from way back was because the other morning, so I'm on medication right now and every morning at 7 a.m. I have to walk downstairs and take my medication and I don't know if it's just here in Canada, Ontario, Canada, but at 7 a.m. it's still pitch black outside. Like it's, <laughs> it's darker than midnight almost here. I didn't, oh, I just heard a huge smash in my house somewhere. Hold on. Okay. My sister's just home, it's fine. What was I saying? Oh, so I was downstairs taking my medication. I'm standing in the kitchen and basically if you're standing in the kitchen, you can see all the way over to the living room where the Christmas tree is. And in the morning, it's pitch black in there. I don't turn on any lights in there. The only light I have on is my kitchen light. So I was like looking over into my living room and the Christmas tree, like, I don't want to freak you guys out, but at night and the lights are off on the Christmas tree, it looks like this huge figure in the corner of the room and it looks really freaky. And like, you know when you're already freaked out and your mind plays tricks on you? I literally thought for a split second that I saw like someone's head peering out from behind the Christmas tree and I actually jumped. Like, you know when your heart skips a beat when you think you saw something scary? That actually happened and I'm like, let me take my medication as fast as possible. And then I ran upstairs and for some reason I just remembered that chain mail email. But like I said, it's not real. Don't have Christmas be ruined because you think it's real. It's not real. Anyways, I came across this really creepy Christmas tree story online. I'm gonna read it to you guys and um, the author is Glow Trains. It's on Reddit and I'm going to put the link to the whole story down below in the description. I'm not going to read every single paragraph because that would take quite a long time, but if you want to read the whole story, I will link it down below. Okay, it says, I had to burp. Hold on. If I hit my back, will it come out? <laughs> I'm so gross. Oh, it's just sitting there. You know what a burp is just sitting there and like you can't get it up and it's just there. It's just hanging out like right here. Like it's right here. <laughs> Anyways. So it says, most people these days have artificial trees, but my family has always bought real trees every year. It's a pain to clean up the needles, but you just can't beat that nostalgic Christmas pine scent. And it's cool how there's no such thing as the perfect tree. Each one is unique and different in its own way. But the one that we brought home last year was a little more unique than most. I've actually never had a real Christmas tree in my house and I've always wanted one since I was a kid because I love the smell of them. Like I have a fake Christmas tree downstairs right now and I put those little fake pine smelling center scents, scent things in the tree so it smells real but it's not. Don't let it fool you. Anyways it says, when my dad brought it inside nothing really seemed weird about it at all. It was just your average live balsam fir tree. Green needles six and a half feet, trunk sawed off and ready to be put on display. And no, it wasn't until a little later that things started to get freaky. One of the secret tips of putting up a natural Christmas tree is to let it sit for a few days before you decorate it. You have to give it some time for the branches to spread out. That's what my dad would always say. So it wasn't until four days after we put our new Christmas tree in its stand that we gathered around as a family to add the decorations. And that's when we noticed the growths. On every other branch hung these small lumps, for lack of a better word. They were brown and dry and none of them really had any defining features, but they were all unique shapes. I looked at my dad and he was just as creeped out as I was. It was pretty freaky, but we went ahead and strung up our decorations anyway, but I shuddered every time my hand accidentally brushed one of them. Oh, that sounds so gross. Like whenever I read these stories, I always picture it in my head and I'm just thinking of this beautiful natural tree, but the very end of each branch has this disgusting like lump on it. Like, excuse me, is it diseased? Over 
over time, the growth started to change shape. We all had our own ideas of what they were. My mom thought that maybe they were an odd kind of fruit. My dad thought that they were deformities in the wood of the branches. And I thought maybe some parasitic insect had infested the tree. Which meant none of us were prepared when we noticed the largest growth was starting to look exactly like a tiny rib bone. It sounds crazy to say now, but even though our Christmas tree was growing weird bone-like protrusions, we all just sort of chose not to talk about it. Oh my gosh, if my Christmas tree started growing bones out of the end of each branch, <laughs> especially because it's fake, imagine a fake Christmas tree growing bones, I'd bring it back and be like, okay, like, Fred, why did you sell this to me? Oh my gosh, that's so gross. For a whole month, we pretended that everything was fine. Wow, this family's really chill. Maybe we thought that if we didn't bring attention to it, they'd go away and we'd be left with a normal tree. Unfortunately, things don't work that way. We couldn't ignore it forever though. Each growth started to grow into some kind of macabre skeleton part. And by Christmas day, none of us wanted to go anywhere near it. I could never bring myself to really look at it, but every now and then I would catch glimpses of it in my peripheral vision. Part of a skull here and a vertebrae there. They were distinctly bone shaped, but none of them were human. From my quick glances, I easily noticed bird beaks and possum skulls. So they're growing animal parts at the end of the branches. That is so bizarre. My dad would not leave that in our house. Like as stubborn as he is as leaving things be when he buys them, he would have that thing out of there so fast. The breaking point was when some of the growths started to fuse together. They had a warped alien quality to them. The growths were evolving it was past time to get the tree out of our home. I think so. You probably should have got rid of it a long time ago. On Christmas Day, we gathered around the horrifying tree and fully looked at it for the first time. It was a mess of bones, tree branches, and our pitiful attempt at decorations. With a decisive breath, my mom bent to the floor to take it out of the tree stand. She yelped and jumped back like she had just been burned. Oh my gosh, Eric, the floor, she stammered, frozen in shock, and my dad stooped down to take a look. His eyes locked to the base of the trunk and I crouched down to the floor to take a look. The tree had grown into the floor. The wood had engulfed the plastic tree stand and rooted itself straight into the floor of our house. There weren't any roots, just floor and tree trunk fused together as if they had always been like that. My dad ran back into the room with an ax from the garage. I just barely got myself up and pulled my mom away in time before he started swinging. When the first blow connected with the base of the trunk, an agonizing wail filled the air. The tree lashed out and smacked my dad across the room. The last thing I saw before I blacked out was the tree shivering in pain. I'm still not sure as the sound of rattling bones filled the air. The tree does not want to leave your house. <laughs> that sucks. Oh my gosh, this next part. So our tree is already up this year since we were never able to take it down from last Christmas. They had it in their house all year because they can't get it out. Oh my goodness, you don't know how fast I would have called someone to like literally dig it right out of the house. Like there's no way I'd be sleeping in that house that was still there. For a whole year, it's been in our living room and we just had to pretend that it wasn't. We made up lies and excuses so no guests would come over. My dad hasn't even been anywhere near that side of the house since he got out of the hospital. The tree is still attached to the floor, but I feel like it's rooted deeper than that. I feel like the roots go past the floor, down through the foundation of the house and deep into the soil beneath. It has found its new home, oh my goodness. It's connected to something we're not supposed to see and it's awakening in our house. It's been pretty quiet for the last few months, but with the holidays rolling back around, it started to act up again, which is why I'm posting this, to maybe get some help before it's too late. So far, it's just been bones, but this morning, I saw an eyeball. Oh! This story is so freaky and I feel like it, it's so underrated. Like not a lot of people have seen it. It has 92 upvotes. This story needs thousands and thousands. Like it is so good. It's so freaky. Glow trains. Mm. I just don't see a lot of scary Christmas stories that often, so it's really cool to read this. Let me know what you guys think. I thought it was so awesome. I had like shivers during that last sentence. It's so cool. Anyways, though, I know this video had two random parts to it, but I hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to head over and subscribe to my vlog channel. That is linked below as well, and I'm gonna get going now. I will see you in my next video. Bye!